Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Doom, do, do, do. Boom, doo, 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 boo, doo, 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 David, what do you suppose has happened to Roger? Oh, he'll be down any minute. Sure you woke him up? Of course I woke him up. Maybe you better go upstairs and take a look. Why? Maybe he went back to sleep. Not Roger. Why not Roger? Because that partner of mine is a real, real fisherman. Now, what's being a real, real fisherman got to do with sleeping? Well, he'll want to get started fishing good and early. Well, it may still be good, but it certainly isn't early anymore. It's almost half past seven. Well, it's still early for Roger. Is it early for the fish, too? No, just about right for the fish. Oh, poor little fish. Say, if Roger doesn't come downstairs soon, you're not going to have time for breakfast. Oh, we'll grab some on the way. You will not. You'll grab it right here before you leave. I'm not going to have you standing hip high in water with nothing on your stomach. Now, look, darling. Uh, One has nothing to do with the other. Having a decent breakfast has something to do with everything. Oh, you win. I'll go up and see what's keeping Roger. You know, I never thought Roger would be a fisherman. Why not? I don't know. You don't expect anyone with an ulcer to be a fisherman, do you? Don't you? Well, he just doesn't seem the type for fish. He does for an ulcer, but not for fish. What, uh, what is the type? Oh, more bloodthirsty, angrier... More outdoorish. Well, there's a lot you don't know about Roger. He's a very complicated person. That much I do know. And while I think of it, Mrs. Norton, am I the fisherman type? Bloodthirsty and angry? Well, a little bit. Around the edges. I like it on a man. You know you ought to go fishing more. I should? You feel very nice in this big woolly shirt. Well, that's a fine reason. Name a better one. You're not wearing it for the weather. It's been warm. (laughs) It's always pretty cool on a trout stream early in the morning. In May, nonsense. You're wearing it because fishermen always wear woolly shirts. (laughs) You think you're very smart, don't you? Do I? Darling, you can wear this shirt for me any time. Don't have to wait for the trout. Thank you. Thank you for the permission. Hello. Oh, Oh, hello. Hmm, This is a very pretty domestic scene. Roger, we're just wondering what had happened to you. Claudia was wondering, Roger. Mm, I slept gorgeously. Good. Now, breakfast. Breakfast? Good heavens, no. No what? Nothing, except I don't take anything for at least an hour after I'm up. You don't? Well, that's awful. What's so awful about it? I wake up starving. So does David. I hadn't realized. Now you know. Now, come on, the two of you, into the dining room. Breakfast has been waiting for half an hour. You're coming, Roger? Well, I'll watch. You'll eat. When Claudia says eat, you eat. Everything's on the table, so help yourselves. Orange juice? To call the pits out, so go on, drink it. Do you good. Oh, all right. We'd better hurry, too. Jared Tuck will be, be along any minute. I'm rather looking forward to seeing him again. I'll never forget the first time I drove up here and saw the for sale sign on the house. I fell in love with it at first sight. Then Jared Tucker said he wouldn't sell. <laughs> oh, don't remind me. You know, I still can't believe he sold the farm to us. David, it was a stroke of brilliance getting Jared Tucker to guide us today. Oh, he knows all of the best streams around here, he says. He should. He's been fishing in them for the best part of a century. Pass me the cream, Roger. Surely. There's only one thing I can't understand. Only one thing? Thanks. Why you two are going fishing in a dinky little stream? When there's a whole ocean not too far away. You can hardly call what they do in the ocean fishing. You can't? That business with heavy tackle and big lines, that's not fishing. That's organized murder. I see. And your fishing isn't? Trout fishing? That is something else again. Oh. There's no sport quite like it. Not like dry fly fishing. There isn't? Dry fly? What is it? Just what it sounds like. Little bits of feather, all prettily colored, and thread and a hook made quite ingeniously to look like a fly. Really? The things you men think of. What uh, what was that? Trout fishing could be so simple. You could be sitting safe and dry on the river bank, but you decide to have wet feet and 
dry flies instead. Uh, don't you pay any attention to her, Roger. I won't. I think I'll go and ask our handyman if he's got the worms ready for you. Worms? Did you say worms? Of course. Well, you're going fishing, aren't you? But that's what the dry flies are for. What for? The fishing. We use them instead of worms. Why? Why? Uh, you explain it to her, David? Mm, certainly. Darling, a trout bite better on dry flies than they do on worms. I don't believe it. She doesn't believe it. She well, how can I? It. When people have been using worms for thousands of years. That doesn't prove anything. It's all the proof I need. Good. Of course, I know the real reason why you prefer dry flies. Only you won't admit it. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is the real reason? And I don't blame you for it. Oh. I'd feel the same way. What way? Worms. That is not the reason. David, you don't have to pretend. Everybody feels the same way about worms. Claudia, a man who fishes for trout with flies has nothing, nothing on earth but contempt for people who use worms. Claudia, I have never fished with anybody who used worms, and I trust that the occasion will never arise. I hasten to explain that this is not because of my feeling against the worm, but because of my respect. For the trout. Very nicely put, Roger. Well, you can give any excuse you like. I wouldn't mind even going fishing with dry flies, but worms, never. Claudia, a man who would use worms to catch trout is a man who would steal from his mother, pilfer from the poor box, and hunt deer with <laughs> machine guns and hand grenades. Oh, Roger, you're terrible. You haven't even finished your orange juice. Uh, oh, so I haven't. I wish Jared Tucker would get here. I want to get started. Good thing he didn't get here at 7.15 when he was supposed to. You say he really knows the streams, David? Oh, he's promised us excellent fishing. We each ought to catch at least a dozen. Is that all? Well, that doesn't sound like very much. That's a great deal for trout. What a fuss for 12 little fish. If I'd known you were so crazy about trout, David, I'd have bought you some a long time ago. Why didn't you say so? Buying trout and catching trout are two entirely different things. Not when you eat them. Especially when you eat them. Well, maybe you're right. Maybe I wouldn't like to eat a fish I caught. Uh, Roger meant uh, just the uh, opposite. He did? Mm -hmm. Roger, I am surprised at you. Darling, what about our lunch? Is it ready? Of course it's ready. It's in the kitchen. I hope you haven't wrapped a lot of sandwiches. Oh, I don't think it'll be too much. And I filled a thermos with coffee. I love coffee in the thermos. It has a much better taste. Uh, that is a matter of opinion. No, in a sort of a way, except for the fishing part, I wish I were going with you. You can drink your coffee out of a thermos right here at home whenever you like. May I? Mm -hmm. Now, that is sweet. Oh, I can't wait to be standing in that sunny stream, the birds singing, the trout biting. I don't think there's anything that compares with trout fishing on a beautiful, crisp spring day like this one will be. I'm with you on that. Uh-oh, there's Jared Tucker. I'll answer it. I got your equipment ready, David? Uh, standing in the front hall, waiting for me. Hello, Mr. Tucker. Morning, Miss Norton. Huh, what's the matter? Anything wrong? Hey, you ain't dressed yet. Oh, yes, I am. You ain't coming fishing? I expected you to be out there with us, pulling them trout in. <laughs> no, I'm not coming. I thought you men would like to be off by yourselves. A little privacy? Well, Mrs. Norton, you're the first woman I met who understands what a man's like. Yep, the first. Well, hello here, Mr. Tucker. You got a right smart wife, Mr. Norton. Yep, right smart uh, she is. <laughs> that's news to me. Maybe she could even tell you what that nice red sunrise I saw this morning means. Bright red sunrise? Yep. How nice. That means a beautiful day. You see, she's not so smart. Oh, yes, she is. Uh, red sunrise means a beautiful day for fishing. You think it may rain? Yep, yep, begin to cloud up right now. Oh, David, I'm sorry. Sorry? Why, there's, why, there's, why, there's nothing like an overcast day for bringing fish right up to the top of the water. Come a little drizzle, the silly fish don't know where the water ends and the air begins. <laughs> nothing <laughs> like rain. Did you say rain? <laughs> did, it did, did, it did. No wonder my rheumatism's been so bad. I can hardly lift my arm this morning. I hope the sun would help it. Fishing's just what you need. In the rain? In the rain. But I sure hope it don't start before we're finished climbing the ledge. Climbing the ledge? Sure, got to climb over the big ledge to get to the other side of the hill. A hill? Streams at the bottom of it. That ledge gets slippery in the rain. Dangerous. Hmm. When and if we make it, I hope the fish will be biting, Mr. Tucker. Mr. Uh, Mr. Killian. Uh, just slipped the name. I know you're Mr. Norton's partner in architecture. Well, Mr. Gillian, there's three things I never tried to predict. Three? 
I never tried to predict how a woman is going to act at any given moment. I ain't never tried to predict what day the ice is gone out in East Brook Lake. And I ain't never tried to tell a body if he's going to catch fish or if he ain't. That makes sense. So if there's a fish you want, uh, you don't want to take no chance, I recommend you walk yourself down to the fish market and buy yourself a frozen flounder. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd better get started. Hey, don't forget that box, David. This enormous crate? What is it? Your lunch. That much? In that? You're going to get awfully hungry climbing rocks and ledges in the rain. I'm going to get awfully hungry carrying this. Good. And you'll eat it all. Oh, but Claudia... David, this... we'd better just go quietly. Yep. That reminds me there's one thing I insist on. I don't want no talk. Not a sound. It scares the fish away. No talking at all? Not a peep. Well, I certainly hope you have a good time. Well, we'd better stop this shilly shally and get moving. I left my can of worms outside on the porch. David... Did you hear what I heard? I uh, heard it, I I think. Roger? I think I heard it too, but I'm hoping I didn't. Did you say worms, Mr. Tucker? Sure said worms. Well, that's what I thought you said. And you left them on the porch? Of course it did. I ain't the kind of a man who comes into a body's parlor dragging his worms in with him. <laughs> <laughs> Why, of course not, Mr. Tucker. But you, you, you do like using worms, Oh, Mr. sure Tucker? I do like using them. What do you think I use? My bare hands? I was wishing you did. Well, come on. Let's go. I'll, uh, I'll take the lunch crate. And here's your rain poncho, darling. Uh, goodbye, darling. Goodbye. Take care of yourself. Yeah. A box, lunch, and a crate. It started to rain. My arm aches. No talking. And Tucker uses worms. <laughs> David, just one thing more. What? Please don't catch too many trout. What? Well, after all, you're three grown men against one little fish. Somehow it doesn't seem quite sporting to me. It doesn't? As a matter of fact, I think you'd be a little ashamed to catch a perfectly harmless, helpless trout. <laughs> oh, David, one of the most profoundly mysterious things about women is why they always take the side of the fish. Mm hmm, 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 hmm. Dum, dum, da, dum, dum. La, 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 la. Sometimes a mere snack takes on the aspects of a festive lunch. For instance, if you reach into the refrigerator and add a bottle of ice-cold Coca-Cola to your noonday meal, a sandwich, a salad, or any leftover somehow becomes an appetizing treat. That's one more reason for keeping your refrigerator well supplied with Coke. You'll find the afternoon's duties are easier to face if you lunch refreshed. Every day, Monday You're through Friday... You're a fisherman, Mr. King? Why, of sorts, Mr. Tucker, I, I only like it when the fish bite, though. Then you ain't no fisherman. The fish is the least important thing, Doss. Yep, the least. Well, maybe you take me fishing someday, Mr. Tucker, in spite of that. Sure will, sure will. I'll, uh, I'll take you Monday. Monday? Oh, sorry, Camp Monday. We'll all be back in New York on Monday. Mr. and Mrs. Norton gone in? I think they'll be planning to. Whether they catch their train or not is something else again. All you got to do to catch a train is set your alarm clock early enough. Nope, that's not all. To catch a train, you mustn't let Claudia park the car. But that's what you'll find out on Monday. Well, so long, Mr. King. Got to get to my fishing. Yep. Goodbye, Mr. Tucker. And as I was saying, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, Whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause, the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These programs star Catherine Bard as Claudia and Paul Crabtree as David. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.